Daryl Collins. Did I wake you up? You did not. How are you, sir? <laughs> I can't imagine what your body clock is even like, you know, being over there in Ukraine and then coming back to the States. Yeah, it's kind of like me, Arrow. Uh, and by the way, it's great to hear from you. It is always great to hear your voice. You are a great human being. You do great things. And I'm always better for talking to you. So let me say that first. But it's like me. You know, they say a broken clock is uh, still correct uh, twice a day. That, that's kind of like my, you know, it's, it's about twice a day I feel good. So yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> You know, one of the things that inspires me about you is the fact that you just keep pushing. And what I mean by that is, is that, I mean, you're utilizing every bit of the medium when it comes to getting the word out about what you're doing over there in Ukraine while having your feet planted on this soil. Yeah, it's not the kind of thing that you can, you know, you can turn off and on. Um, I've learned it's not the kind of thing that you can, you can regulate. I mean, it's one of those things in life that, uh, I mean, I don't know, you you can't be, uh, as it turns out, you can't be half pregnant about uh, being all in on uh, love and hope, you know, and really the, the force of the experience over there is just not something that I, I think anybody could could reasonably turn off if you have any kind of conscience, any kind of soul, you know, just because you get on you know, you get in a car and, and you drive for, for a day to, to an airport and take three or three, uh, you know, uh, jets home and you're in a totally different land. You can't sever that cord. And frankly, it's very difficult to be here because constantly. It's why I constantly wear every single day. I just wear, you know, uh, you know, kind of the, the Ukrainian colors. We try and you know wear things that, that say her song. I just be, it's, it's just, just just to you know make sure those folks understand that you know just out of sight isn't out of mind. And, and I think it's just it's really hard to pull away from it. You know, also we're still doing doing things there, but uh, that's a tough situation, Arrow. And I think you'd be the same way, man. You just, you can't just walk out of a place like that, Mm-mm. especially knowing that you have the ability to make a difference. And, and just and just shut it off because because uh, you know you want to spend time with your kids. So I try and do my best. My, my best. So how did you react this week when the president was basically spoke about Ukraine being you know we're in this position that reminds them of World War II, but at the same time Zelensky came out of the country and made an appearance to the world. Yeah, you know it's a, it's a curiosity there. Um, uh, I'm not sure I had any particular reaction to it other than to observe that uh, it, it is, uh, you know, the, the truth there, and I, I wouldn't expect anybody over here to understand this, and so I don't, I don't really engage, but anybody on the ground over there understands what's, what's going on, and it's, it's, it's it, this is not, um, isolationism is not an option. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's a good option, even if it were an option, uh, you know, just that's my personal view. Uh, you know, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be wise to isolate if we had that option, but, but when you're over there and what all of us understand on the ground over there, but we also understand that nobody over here can understand is that this is not some regional conflict that, uh, you know, we, 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 we choose whether to, to involve ourselves in for some altruistic purpose. That is not what this is at all. It is a proxy war that is either a play, a prelude to, 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 you know, an apocalyptic, apocalyptic world war three, or it is an opportunity to prevent that. And, mm-hmm. And we don't have the option of isolating from that. We have to run right at that. And for our own sake, uh, you know, we, we've been interested in that. So so that's, that's kind of how I react to, the, to, to those kind of events. I mean, there's been so much news coming out of Ukraine, and it's not, it's not been the best because all of a sudden you realize that the tanks from the U.S. are being accused of not living up to their potential. Yeah, honestly, Arrow, you know, there is uh, another reason that I, I always um, – I sort of look askance at, at what I read. I, if I can just, you know, I don't know how to do it other than just to be honest. Yeah. It always gets me in trouble, Arrow. But, uh, you know, when I read, I really try and stay away from the big headlines uh, because I am inevitably left with a profound sense that there is a gigantic disconnect between the portrayal of the events, you know, necessarily on, on a high level and generically and the and the truth on the ground. Uh, and that that's not something. So, over there on the ground, that that's that's something that we deal with every day. Um, you know, the, 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 there's all kinds of uh, logistical difficulties. Um, uh, things, you know, it's it's uh, getting things where they need to to to, to get it takes time. Uh, there's bureaucracy. Uh, situations change. By the time it shows up, the needs are different. It's incredibly inefficient, and more and more we are you know being pulled into that world. Um, I have t- I have two lines. I'm not going to do anything illegal. I'm not going to do anything immoral. That, that's that, that's my line. Everything else that I can do in support of humanity, uh, I'm going to do. And one of the things that a lot of folks are 
playing a role in now is 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 the term is the term that that is used is unofficial channels. Mm. That doesn't mean you know, but you know, look, you need things. Okay. I mean, these guys need things. It's a matter of life and death. The headlines are great. $60 billion for all this stuff in the U S that's great. But what, 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 you know, isn't really understood is it takes a long time to get there's, there's, or, you know, market forces take over, uh, and, and, and create, you know, ways to get them the things that they need quicker. And, you know, folks like us can help with that. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Putin again has stepped forward saying, I'm not afraid of using nuclear weapons. To me, when somebody speaks like that, that shows fear. Completely agree. I think we learned that in like kindergarten or something, right? Like, yeah, I mean, it's like walking into first grade and saying, you know, um, well, maybe it's not. That's a bad analogy. But I, but I, but I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. I mean, it's like, you know, if you're playing through, somebody says like, you know, I'm not b- bluffing. Uh, you know, we all know you're bluffing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, if you ha- if you have to say I'm not bluffing, I mean, you know, uh, but at the same time, it is it is uh, it is disconcerting, is it not? Mm-hmm. I mean, which, which am I allowed to ask you questions? I don't know how to sure, here. Sure, we, you're what, more than what, welcome what, to. What your, what's your view on that? Well, how do you feel? About well, that? everything that I've written is based 100 percent on he's he just showcased his fear. That, that he's afraid that the, that, the, that the world is coming to him. And, and so, therefore, he's going to put up that big nuclear bomb uh, threat. And, and, oh, we're all going to back down. And, and it's like, okay, you know. But, but w- w- where I come from, though, is that, wow, just one of those things goes off, either there or even in Gaza. And all of a sudden, every whale on this planet, every seal, everything on this planet when it comes to other forms of living things is gone. And I just, I just don't think we're that selfish. You would like to think that, right? Right. I mean, we would be we sure. I mean, we would sure hope. Um, it's certainly a possibility. I think um, one of the things that has reassured me is that, uh, I mean, obviously people way above my pay grade and uh, maybe maybe even above yours, if, if, if that exists, Arrow, <laughs> kind of like Oz. Uh, but uh, I think they, you know, they, they war game these things out. And, you know, there's all kinds of back channel conversations. And the moment that, uh, Putin uses a nuclear weapon. Uh, his entire, you know, the entire Russian military is wiped off the face of the planet. Uh, it, it, you know, NATO is not a bad thing. You know, there's 32 countries, all of which have, you know, a lot of stuff. They're right on the doorstep, and um, and there's different types of nuclear weapons too. You know, you know, we talk about things generically, and I think that causes a lot of confusion sometimes because there's there's a lot of different flavors of that ice cream. There's there's sort of you know I mean, you've got intercontinental ballistic stuff that can like reach the U.S. The stuff that you know you, you know the, of the uh, of the old uh, Cold War era, and then there's there's lower you know caliber nuclear weapons. And I think if they were to use one, it, it, my sense is it would be of the latter. But to your point, it's not a great thing to think about, right? I mean, it's not it's not stuff. It's not a positive thought. It's not a positive thought. Well, before uh, joining up with you today, I was looking, I I love looking up famous quotes because I believe that famous quotes come from personal experiences, not from this generation, but from generations of afar. And, and I, and I came across one and from, from Mark Twain, where he actually said, nothing exists. All is a dream. God, man, the world, the moon, the wilderness of stars, a dream, all a dream. I mean, that, that just blows me away when, when people think like that, because I think that you and I are really talking here. This is not a dream. It's not a dream. And let me just, you know, offer a footnote. I mean, it's not, I mean, it, it's early, you know, and I mean, that's, that's some heavy stuff to, I mean, I don't know that I'm intellectually capable of, of absorbing all this. <laughs> I'm having a hard time digesting it. So that's why I gave I it mean, to you. <laughs> you know, I mean, give, give me a little warm up, man. You know, uh, I love, I love, I love talking to you for that reason. I'm sure your listeners, you know, um, you know, we, we uh, uh, yeah, I agree. It's not a dream. There's a very big, you know, there's a very serious reality about it. And when I'm over there, um, you know, there's just it's the kind of thing that uh, I think I can I can speak for pretty much everybody over there. I, I, my sense is that, that, that they feel the same way. There's just some things that there's no way that we can come over here and explain. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you don't know this, but over there, it is the the the, the, the tone and tenor of the discussion is very. Different. There is no, I mean, the idea that Putin is uh, that this thing is confined to Ukraine and we can kind of leave it at that is 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 just you know obviously folly over there uh you know he won't stop until he stopped so we either invest i mean 60 billion dollars is a lot of money 
But again, uh, and I give the speaker a lot of credit, a real profile and courage from my perspective. Uh, to, you know, as he said, I mean, even cynically, we either give them bullets or we give them our kids, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's, it's uh it's, 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 it's pretty tough. It's I got to ask thing. you something really super personal here only because uh, I think you can relate with what I'm about ready to share. And it might be heavy and, and please openly admit to me that it is. So I step out into my forest here in South Charlotte today. The scent of death is in my forest. You can smell it. There's a dead animal. When oh, you're in oh. Ukraine, I can't imagine you dealing with this daily. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, we don't deal with it daily, and and uh, but we do deal with it from time to time. I mean, it, it, we, you know, for me anyway, enough. And by the way, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mind being heavy at all. I, I enjoy being heavy. Uh, you know, we have a limited time on on this planet, and I would far prefer to talk of things of consequence and, and import than, than the, tr the, the the stuff that's trivial. But anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, we we it's encountered directly or indirectly you know, frequently enough. And, um, you know, I don't, the, the luxury, if you want to call it that, of being in a place like Kherson, which is different from all the other places, again, the only big city occupied. Uh, these are people that live through, you know, something that could be analogized, not irresponsibly, to, to, to you know, living through like an Auschwitz. I mean, Russian occupation is, mm. is it, okay, the, the suffering of these people is, is invisible, it's, 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 it's incomprehensible. And it's an unspeakable to topic, it's not a historical detail. It directly informs the present. You have to be there long enough to kind of understand that. It took me a long time to get that. But anyway, in a place like Kherson, I mean, the, the you know, to be living amongst the population that experienced something like that, and then, gets the double whammy of being the only population that exists in artillery range, a fundamental different reality. Like the difference between Disneyland and the Balkans in the nineties. Okay. It, you, you definitely have in that place uniquely those kind of experiences. Um, but the luxury that I have, I guess, I, I think is a luxury this way. There's no time there. It's such a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Very truly. We can, we, we can do it, but it requires intensity uh, that, you know, it's difficult to, to describe. I don't have time to sit there and, 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 and think deep thoughts. And in fact, it's really irresponsible, I've learned. You know, you, you, that, that's the inclination. You, you have that experience, you see that thing, it might not be every day, but you have that experience that frankly, you never thought you'd have. Most, you know, 99.999% of the world ever has. It's necessarily thought provoking. It's something that you know in the moment has changed you. You don't know how, you don't know why. The inclination is to kind of, you know, sit down and think about that. And in the second I do, I realize I'm I'm letting my team down if, yeah. if I do that because there's stuff flying overhead. It's not until I get back here that I really have time to open that door to think about those kinds of things and, and really just find myself sitting out back and thinking all day because it's the first opportunity I, I have to, to, to really process those kinds of experiences. So I'm I'm really just figuring that out right now, Arrow. You know, yeah. I'm it is an interesting kind of, kind of thing. So I, I like the way that you have your business meetings and you're very transparent with people on Facebook where, where you're, you're having conversations with those in Ukraine. Do you not see that as a leadership role for other businesses that they, they need to come back, come out of the little closets and, and from behind the curtains and have conversations with the, those that are making a difference in other people's lives? I absolutely do. I mean, I appreciate the kind words. We try and do it a certain way. Um, you know, I'm 48 years old. I've I've learned pretty much everything that's important the hard way, and I, I just try to incorporate those lessons. But one of the the big things that I think is is important since I've been over there is is to just be very transparent. You know, I didn't know anything about what I'll call the, the humanitarian world. You know, this kind of big pharma, big tobacco. There, there's there's big humanity. Yeah. You know, uh, the International Red Cross. The you know you, you've got some. Uh, and these people are stewards of resources that, you know, I think there's an implicit trust there. And I don't want to cause like a massive controversy on your show, Arrow, but but if you want to open up a Pandora's box, uh, the nicest way that I can say this is I, I have been, it has been disconcerting to me to see how, uh, you know, um, well, put, put it this way. I, not, not everybody, you know, I think is as responsible as they should be with the resources that they're giving. And, and, and so I, I just want, you know, let's be transparent. Let's be upfront. Uh, why wouldn't you be, you know, I mean, what have you got to, to, to hide? And, mm -hmm. and also, also I want to get people invested in it. You know, 
um, it's not our free store at the front. You know, it's your free store at the front. It's everybody's free store at the front. We're just an outpost of humanity on the precipice of the apocalypse. We've set up a, a distribution base, but we have nothing to give if uh, the middle line, the back line, all the people around the world that help us. It's such a beautiful thing. If they don't work their tails off the way that they do, people from all over the world working across languages and cultures every single day, arrow for no other reason other than they just care. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Yeah. How beautiful is that? We have nothing to give if they don't do their part. They do their part. Our part just happens to be that we touch it last which seems remarkably unfair arrow every single day i'm when we have the, the free store at the front um there is nothing more powerful intimate life-changing very truly it, it, inescapably so than the, the ground zero experience of being a human being who gives another human being i mean uh, the neediest of the neediest of the neediest of the needy the uh, which are found as they always are in the most dangerous places in the most dangerous places in the most dangerous places who come uh, in need of, you know, not salt and pepper. I mean, like life's basics, food, medicine, you know, basic clothing. These are the basics. There is nothing more intimate, life-changing or powerful than being the human being uh, who, who gives, you know, that, that, that humanistic transaction to put it, to put it mildly, those people are very, are very grateful. That, that is just, it's, it's, it's ground zero of humanity and how ironic it is that these people who are grateful beyond belief as anybody in their position would, people that have, people have suffered incomprehensibly. Uh, they're thanking me, Arrow, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just I just touched it last, man. You know, it's all, it's the global aid train for Ukraine. It's all these wonderful people from all over the world that uh, have enriched my life so much by 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 finding us, you know, and, and um, uh, you know, and, and, and doing what they do so that we can, which is a lot. These people do a lot. And yes, our part of it is we, we happen strangely. Nobody's more surprised than me that we, we have, we can do this. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard as hell. It's terrifying. Every moment there is, is ter but that's our part, but it just happens to be our part. We're, we're, you know, the front line, great, but the front line is on the same line as the back line, the middle line. And it's, we're all on the same team and all these other people do so much. And I get to be the one to touch it last. Mm -hmm. I get to be the one to see, that mesmerizing, powerful, uh, transcendent force that would knock anybody on their tail in a very positive way and enrich. And uh, I, I get to be that. It seems remarkably unfair. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the name of your book. I touched it last. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, Errol. That's that's a great idea. When's your book coming out? Oh, dude, I you know I've got seven of them out there, and one of the things about about writing books is the fact that it consumes so much time, and and that you don't get that time back. And I realize that seems to be so selfish, but but everything that I do, I've learned that put it in a podcast, put it put it on the choice, put it on lyrics from Rainbow Forest, put it on put it on the Daily Mess. This way, then people can hear the emotion, they can hear everything that we're talking about. For instance, like. What we're talking about if i were to put your words in a book i don't think you would have the impact that you do by them physically hearing your emotions well that's i mean that's that's uh that's an interesting perspective and it's persuasive uh and uh thanks that i'm, I'm glad that they that those things translate that way um i don't know that if we have the time and just tell me if we don't but but can i offer a different perspective on that go for it's it it's interesting to bring it up um and i'm not convinced of this this is just a different perspective and and what you just said makes sense but one thing that has that, that i've been thinking more and more uh as i've been back here for whatever reason is is uh is how uh, especially here in the first world where we have uh you know, we don't realize the things that we, we, we have shamefully. I, 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 you know, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude every single day. I think I, you know, I, I can tell you this, I've just cried tears of, you know, organic, just, 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 uh, uh, of gratitude because every single thing that I do here every day are things that I do in her son, but I do them now here and I realize I'm not in danger. I mean, serious mm -hmm. danger. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm saying I'm walking my kid to school, how grateful I am that my kid gets to go to school. Mm -hmm. How grateful I am that, you know, all, things like that, every single, going to the grocery store. And, and I'm just overwhelmed by, by you know, but we have, we have the freedom that we have and naturally we use it and that's great. And we have these things and all of a sudden, you know, life is a way of, you know, how ironic is it that 
uh, our life is full of like doing things like trying to hook up Bluetooth and, and, and trying to, <laughs> you know, all those, you know, all the things that come with that. And we never be, just to me, it's, it's interesting. Uh, we never, we never take the time to step back and, 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 you know, life is uh, it's a sound by culture. It's modern technology, all of that. And I don't know whether the solution is to, is to lean into that uh, and sort of embrace that and try and work within its confines. And that's a reasonable perspective. And that what you, what you just said makes a lot of sense, but more and more for me, I have been thinking, you know, it is so important to step out, to, to step out of this, to take it, take a, you know, how, how, uh, how interesting that, uh, we, we spend so much time on so many things and many of us never really just take the time to be intentional about our existence, to think mm -hmm. about the question, mm -hmm. you know, do, does, does, does our life have meaning? I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. Um, uh, everybody has, you know, but, but it's a yes or no. And if it's a no, then, then, you know, okay, whatever. But I think most people would say yes. But if, if the answer is yes, then it, 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 it begets this question, it begs this question, what meaning do you want to give it? In other words, what, what kind of life, what do you want to do with this magical, valuable, incredible thing, this precious mystery that you have for a finite period of time in your life? What do you want to do with it? How ironic that we don't take the time to think about, to, to be more intentional about our existences. And, and would we live differently? We almost assuredly would if we took the time to think about those things and charted a course consistent therewith. So I've, I've, your point makes a lot of sense, and I've thought about that. But, but for me, you know, these are these deep questions. I mean, that heavy Mark Twain stuff you just threw at me. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, that's it's not it, it, it's, it's good stuff and there's good stuff there. But I don't know that it can be pulled apart, you know, in a quick five minute little download. I, I don't you know, that's if I'm making any sense. So. I, I swear to God that if you and I ever sat in your backyard just having a conversation, we would be throwing so many quotes at each other that it would be like, what the hell? <laughs> For sure. Nobody For sure. would understand what we're talking about. <laughs> For sure. It would, you're right. It would be just uh, two philosophical ships passing the night. But it would, it would be a lot of fun. Errol, I hope we get to do that sometime, man. You're, Absolutely. you're a great guy. And I, I know you're trying to wrap down. So I'm going to just, let me say this though. I am reminded all of your listeners would say the same thing. People like you need to hear this, you know, uh, as they say, people don't remember what you tell them, but they remember how you feel. And yep. everybody that listens to your show, man, uh, you know, every time I talk to you, when I get off the phone, I feel way better about the universe, way more inspired and hopeful. And you're a great guy. So I think, I think, I think it's wonderful that, that, that you have the voice that you, you have and you use it. Oh, so thank there, you so much. Yeah. Where can people, no, uh, I, I realize there's not a Walmart on the corners in, in Kursan. So therefore, how can people help out? <laughs> um, appreciate you doing that. So, uh, W and, and thank you for that. We've got a new kind of product here. We're rolling out and I'll do it real quick. www.worldaidrunners.com. Um, we really, you know, we don't, we don't solicit donations. We do accept them. And a hundred percent of that goes to, uh, purchase basic food, basic medicine, basic, uh, uh, healthcare of various kinds, basic clothing, the basics for the people of Hassan, the, uh, uh, just a population that has lived through holy hell right there, just over one kilometer from uh, the front in uh, in downtown Kherson, Ukraine, at the free store at the front. Not our, but your free store at the front. But they can also support us as well by checking out uh, War Travel Ukraine, which we are rolling out. And uh, I'll be talking more about this later. But basically, this is an opportunity for people uh, to come see Ukraine. Now, obviously, there's some conversations we need to have, and there's kind of the the, the safe uh, sort of uh, uh, excursion, which involves every place in Ukraine, except for her son, different in kind. And then there's the more uh, sort of ambitious place that, that involves coming to her son. But we would love to have you come to Ukraine. You fly to Krakow, get there on your own nickel. We'll help you get the documents to get in. We will meet you there, give you an orientation, wow. and take you on a customized tour of all of, and, and, and again, it can be, it will fit your risk profile, what you want, what you want to do, but you're going to go and you're going to hand out humanitarian aid that you help fund through the all-inclusive purchase price. And you're going to have the experience that we get to have at the free tour store at the front of helping human beings d directly. It's a life-changing experience. We want everybody to have it and it helps uh, fund the uh, the ongoing humanitarianism. So either worldaidrunners.org or wartravelukraine.org more about that later. I'm excited about it, though. Oh, I'm excited to talk to you again, then, sir. 
I'm always excited to talk. I learn all <laughs> kinds of things, Arrow. You make the world a better place and make me better. So he's a great guy. And I have to ask real quick, how the DJ experience go? The DJ experience mean my, my wedding last week? Yeah. Oh my God! It was a 50th anniversary wedding. They 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 re uh, they redid their vows, and you know it's one of those. I, I wrote about it in my daily writing, and I said that in my 32 years of being a mobile entertainer, it took me it took me 32 years to get to the greatest moment on my on my stage. <laughs> it it was it was just it was unbelievable. Because here's here's the thing about it: the guy that I did this for fired me in 2015. So therefore, I, 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 I forgave him. I, you know, and, you know, you don't forget the moments, but I forgave him and still gave him a top notch performance. I love that. I love that. How, how, uh, wow. So, so how was, how was, uh, how did you feel coming out the other side of that? I mean, what, 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 what was that like? Uh, what kind of that, that life is, is forgiveness yeah. always first. That should be, you're always, you know, we're not always going to get along, but forgive as it's going bad. Forgive in that moment of now. And that's the title of your next book. Yeah, shut up. We didn't have this conversation. <laughs> remember? remember, Mark Twain says it's just in our imagination. We, so we're not even really talking. <laughs> <laughs> we should co-author something. That would be just one perfect amalgam of, of all this stuff. Anyway, that's awesome, man. That was awesome when you did that. And it's great. It's great. It's great right. talking to you. Well, man, I'm going to go to my grandson's graduation. Here's a kid that I thought for sure was going to be a high school dropout. And God love his parents. And God love everybody that stood behind him to, to get into this moment of graduation well please give him my congratulations and enjoy that experience god bless you that's awesome we'll we'll Go talk soon it. buddy all right thanks Sarah. god bless thank you bye-bye